I'm John Wu, president of Avalaz. My teammate, Stephen Buttoff, who's the chief protocol architect of Avalanche, of Avalabs. And uh, we're very excited to be here. I think it's very forward-looking. We want to thank the BASS team here to actually talk about applications. Our founder, Dr. Eamon Kunsir, created Avalanche out of Cornell University, a distributed systems professor. And he always wanted to have an eye towards creating applications and allowing developers to have an easy time at it. So for today, I'm going to talk about a little bit what Avalanche is, and then I will hand it over to Stephen, who will talk about the architect, the design, how it scales, and how it is appropriate for all the founders and uh, developers in the room. So that's me. So you might want to be asking if you don't know who we are, what is Avalanche? And it's pretty simple. Avalanche is the base layer of highly uh, customizable, fast, and interoperable chains. And what does that really mean? What that means is very simple. It is basically an L1 launch pad. It's a network of networks. And if you're a developer or a founder right now, you probably want to know, so why would I want to put an application in and have uh, my own infrastructure as opposed to developing it on an existing monolithic chain? And there are many, many reasons, and I will go through a few of them um, today. Well, the first one is maybe you are a large enterprise out there, and you already have many partners. You already have an ecosystem. So what you really want is your own execution environment, and that's what Avalanche allows you to do. Create your own execution environment in a very efficient and easy way. You can spin up your own L1. Or maybe you are a uh, startup uh, a bunch of developers creating a dApp, but you have product market fit and you have customers already. And what you really care about is creating your own token economics and having your own token. Again, the way Avalanche is designed, you can spin that up and have that capability and customize it as well. Um, third, maybe you're a financial institution and you have a lot of legal and regulatory compliance requirements. You can't just have validators in a permissionless environment where you don't know who the validators are. You need, a, a for now, a proof of authority chain, and hopefully one day when the rules are clearer, maybe you'll get access in an easy way to the permissionless world. Again, Avalanche L1s allow you to spin that environment up very easily. And I think a lot of people in this room will also appreciate uh, the fourth one, which is performance isolation. Perhaps you know you have your own um, application and you really want to keep that isolated from the rest of the other applications because perhaps you don't want someone else's fees spiking to affect your fees and affect your performance. And in that situation, again, Avalanche is set up so that you can have that environment and create it for yourself. What's in common with all these different examples is that they all have complete control over their infrastructure. You know, the projects, some of them already have engineering teams, and they want to design their own validators, their own staking, their own gas, and their permissions and the maintenance rules. And Avalanche allows you to do that. So now I'm going to hand it over to Stephen to talk about how the technology is designed for that. Thanks, John. So briefly, I'm just going to kind of introduce myself. So uh, I'm Stephen Budolf. I'm the chief protocol, protocol architect at uh, Ava Labs. Um, basically, what that means is I've been working on Avalanche Tech uh, ever since it was a research project at Cornell University six years ago. Um, and I've, uh, I've been working on the primary client for Avalanche, which is Avalanche Go. Um, and really, I've been working on designing and implementing all different sorts of protocols, whether it's P2P gossip protocols, uh, consensus protocols, uh, also interacting with database, stuff like that. And those are all the reasons that I, I kind of got interested in blockchain to begin with. I started out being interested in distributed systems, and I stayed because I loved working on networking, databases, consensus, and all the fun, interesting problems, you know, security, cryptography, things like that. Um, so the, the main reason or the main thing I kind of want to talk about today is um, a couple of changes that are going to be coming to the, uh, the Avalanche network in the coming, uh, the coming months. So here are the two kind of major uh, ACPs that I want to talk about. So 
Uh, ACPs are kind of equivalent to like uh, BIPs for Bitcoin improvement proposals or EIPs, Ethereum uh, improvement proposals. We have ACPs, Avalanche Community Proposals. And uh, the first one, which is really what we're primarily going to be talking about, um, is ACP 77, which is going to fully redesign how um, new L1s and new blockchains can truly launch their own network using the Avalanche tech stack. Um, and ACP 103, which we aren't going to talk about too much today, but it's, it's a cool to sh shout it out here, um, is, a, is a fee mechanism that will be used heavily inside of ACP 77 to kind of substitute how validators are being registered into the network. Um, so I think it's first uh, important to kind of step back and talk a little bit about what makes Avalanche's tech stack unique to begin with. Um, so the, the first thing that I want to talk about is low latency consensus over very large la validator sets. So most consensus protocols in the traditional world probably don't scale past, you know, a dozen of nodes. If you think back to like PBFT, some of the newer stuff like Hot Stuff or Tendermint will maybe scale out to say like 100 validators. Uh, but Avalanche consensus is really designed for thousands of validators. And so we were able to launch this very large distributed network um, for thousands of validators and achieve around one second confirmation latency times for blocks. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the, the core, that's, that's where Avalanche gets its name is the Avalanche consensus protocol. Um, and so that's kind of the, the beginning of our kind of tech stack. Um, but really, if we just had a consensus protocol, it's, it's probably not that compelling of a, of a um, argument of why you would use our tech stack. And so this is where kind of heterogeneous networks comes in. So in order to get fee isolation that, that John had, had mentioned a little bit before, um, it's really important to have your, your blockchains executing their state transitions within isolation but it's critical to be able to communicate across blockchains and be able to interact still. So um, this is something like, uh, say, like a Cosmos IBC-esque thing, if you're familiar with that. But it's very difficult to actually manage that across multiple networks. And Avalanche makes that very seamless because you just have to integrate with a single thing and then communicate across all chains within the Avalanche ecosystem. And I, I know I mentioned this a little bit before, but I wanted to point it out briefly, is high performance fee isolated applications. Um, through our kind of recent tests and developments, we've been able to launch uh, blockchains that hit extremely high levels of, of you know, TPS or throughput. If anyone ever tells you high TPS, it's a scam just straight up, so don't, don't take that as, as uh, what I'm trying to say. What actually means is the amount of, of kind of independent operations that can be happening, and whether it's you know, gas and Ethereum or transactions. Uh, at the end of the day, this is micropayments, so basically individual transfers, and it's able to sustainably uh, run at 100,000 simple transfers per second. So, what a transaction means can be very different for different people, so I, I don't want that to be like a, a buzz term, but anyways. So that is kind of the, the core uh, tech stack that I wanna talk about. So, so where, where is Avalanche kind of, uh, kind of right now? Right now, Avalanche has over 1,500 primary network validators. So um, these are active validators that are performing consensus and agreeing on this kind of global ledger. There are also around 300 L1 validators, so these are not primary network, not just primary network validators, but validators running their own custom logic, their own custom blockchain, um, on top of 44 L1s. So if you look at this graph here, all of the green dots are individual nodes, and all of the different clusters are different networks that have kind of joined this kind of avalanche collective. Um, so this is, this is uh, mainnet numbers, and if we look at uh, Fuji, we can see here the kind of the level of testing of people playing around with launching their own, their own custom blockchains and interacting with the, the tech stack. So we're definitely really excited to see kind of more of these, uh, more of these, these networks uh, continue to grow and launch on, uh, on mainnet. Um, Sorry for the text uh, dump here, but I'll, I'll walk everyone through it. A couple of the, the key observations through our kind of like mainnet um, data is that 
no L1s actually share validator sets except with the primary network right now. Um, and if they were to share validators, um, which is totally supported on chain, um, you kind of lose this fee isolation mechanism that we really like. So if you have, you know, the same hardware, multiple blockchains running on the same hardware, the, um, the, you end up getting this kind of resource contention across the two chains that you, is really not a good property to have. Um, additionally, all of these chains are currently permissioned chains. Um, so while permission chains might be the end state for a number of kind of like industry partners and tech um, um, launch pads, we definitely want additional adoption for permissionless validation and we feel like the current space for permissionless validation is, is not as uh, rich as we really desire. Um, we also got a couple key points of feedback that um, we really wanted to address um, and so that's gonna be kind of the core of ACP 77. So the, the key feedback is that many um, large companies, whether due to um, like actual regulatory co uh, concern or just like believed regulatory concern, um, they aren't able to actually validate the primary network. And additionally, there's a pretty large lockup required to also be a primary network validator, which is currently required if you are running an L1. So what we really wanna fix with ACP 77 is providing full fee isolation, so not requiring to share validation resources across, uh, across your L1s and the primary network or other L1s. We also wanna fully enrich the kind of like permissionless interaction and staking for L1s. And then we very concretely need to remove the primary network staking requirements to both onboard additional companies that have uh, you know, regulatory concerns and also to reduce the uh, kind of like cost of uh, initial startup. So here are just a couple graphics to just kind of explain the, the Avalanche network. So right now, and big shout out to Martin for putting this together who's in, this, in the stage, or in the audience. Um, here we have this Avalanche network. Um, currently we have this primary network here and we might have you know, a subnet A, another subnet, another subnet, and it's all kind of commingled within the core primary network. Um, and they're all kind of like sharing these resources. So we have a couple of nodes in multiple subnets potentially sharing resources. And what we are going to be doing after ACP 77 is separating out these uh, different layer ones so that they don't necessarily have this core overlap. We still manage to maintain all of the core kind of properties that we want to maintain with easy interoperability, fast messaging, but we've kind of fully separated out the, the network to be a little bit more isolated amongst the, uh, the different chains. So this is my, my last slide here, but the, the key final goals for ACP 77 is that the L1s should be able to fully define their staked asset. Um, their staking rewards curve. The validators should not be required to validate things like the C chain and X chain in the primary network. They should just be syncing the membership chain to be able to interoperate with other networks. And validators should be as easy to spin up as possible. So we wanna remove the capital requirement of staking on the primary network. Um, so, in order to do this last part, there's a number of technical challenges that you uh, have to overcome. So we've been basically in the background redesigning our P2P networking stack and also redesigning our fee mechanisms so that we can uh, properly charge and uh, rate limit um, additions into this. But uh, if you have any, any questions about the, the gory tech details, which to be perfectly honest, uh, some of you may feel like this was already gory tech details, um, feel free to hit me up uh, after I'll be both here and at SBC throughout the rest of the, uh, the week. So yeah, I'll uh, give it back to John to talk about Codebase. Thank you, Stephen, appreciate that. Um, so for all the founders and developers in this room, I think it's very important um, you actually try this out. And we have a program called Codebase. Codebase is basically the official Avalanche incubator you know, these applications are open as of today, August uh, 6th, and ultimately five teams, 50,000 grants each, 
three prizes with a million dollar prize pool. There's no better thing to do than participate and try this out to see how easy it is to do this. Um, and basically the teams not only get um, resources uh, in terms of uh, incentives, but they also have hands-on support from the entire Ava Labs team who've built out you know, ecosystems, uh, ecosystem leaders, that they are very good at creating marketing. Uh, there's also gonna be weekly seminars to talk about business model innovation, token economics, how to go to market based on the experiences we've seen, and also how you create a community. So this is like concierge service as well as an accelerator all in one. And we're looking forward for all of you uh, founders and developers to try this out. There are plenty of Avalas people in the audience. Please uh, come up to one of us and learn more about this and start building with us. Thank you very much.